All right, my first Bitcoin mining machine. It's actually not Bitcoin, it's cryptocurrency. This one's mining Zcash right now, just as a test. Running stock BIOS on all video cards, Windows 10, and it's doing pretty well. Let's take a look. Oh yeah, real good, he's getting it. Next step is gonna to be to modify the video BIOS for those cards to maximize the, uh, the throughput for computation, and we'll see how that goes. So I wanted to give an update. I have my crypto miner, mining Zcash, it's doing really well. I've hooked up a external USB powered monitor just to monitor the feed itself so I can see when my shares are accepted and uh, see what's going on, make sure everything's good, as well as a, a forward monitor so that I can actually see when there's problems. Then I also have written a little application that allows me to monitor in real time the pool statistics and see what's going on there. So the green on the top you can see are my shares. This is for today and yesterday when I actually had the rig up and running in full power. This is when I was experimenting and messing around with different settings. And this is my hash rate. You can see it pulling in pretty well. It's been consistent and strong. Of course, this is what we're interested in. This is today, and that was yesterday. So it's doing really well. I can see what the current trade price is for my uh, Zek against uh, blue, um, Bitcoin. And uh, we can see what my running averages are. How much I'm making per minute, hour, day, week, month. And these are all just estimates based on what it's currently pulling. Okay, time for an update. So, I've stopped mining Zcash and I've started mining Ethereum. And in doing so, I've worked on optimizing the setup by overclocking and undervolting. So by default, Ethereum is mined on these uh, MSI RX 570 uh, Radeons. This is a Gaming X six of them, and it, uh, the default mine on Ethereum is 22 uh, MHS, so 22 million hashes per second, which was okay, but I wanted better. So what I did is I've underclocked, excuse me, undervolted and overclocked these guys. So now you can see I'm pulling 27 million hash per card, which is really nice. And it is running damn near silent, if you hear this. This is all there is. It's really nice and quiet. Yeah, look at that. That is just beautiful. So another thing I did was, of course, create an application that monitors it, just like I did with Zcash. But this one also has a real tie-in to the Claymore miner itself. So we're getting live statistics right here. So you can see I'm mining Ethereum across all these GPUs. You can see their hash rates. I'm not dual mining, so no DCR. Look at the fan and temps on this, though. That is just gorgeous running at 27 million. Look at that. Very nice. Good metrics. Okay, time for an update. I've added a power and reset button, that's what those are. And the yellow wire is what runs it to the jumpers. That way I don't have to short the jumpers anymore. I got tired of doing that, kind of ridiculous. I've also overclocked my primary GPU a bit more. It's the only one that seems to handle it. It's up over 30 MHS now. It's doing pretty good for uh, $200 video cards. I also have some rear fans to adjust the temperature and help uh, push, push some of the heat out, even though I don't really need it. But I'll do it anyway. I'll update that later. Time for an update. So my mining rig, I have ordered some very quiet Rosewill fans along the back there. You can see those guys. Very quiet, very nice. Just to help cool things down overall. I've also dialed the mining back just a little bit into a sweet spot. I have found that overclocking it considerably uses a lot more energy than it should and thus brings up the overall price that you pay for electricity. So I've dialed it into an uh, undervolt overclock situation that's really nice and stable and I'm getting just about 27. So it's 26.7 pretty much across the board. And to be honest, I can't really see a difference. 
between the payouts and the amount of time it takes to mine. So it's a win-win.